Today, we're gonna transform milk bath nails into a gorgeous blooming marble look in acrylic, all of it in real time. This is gonna be a cool real time because we're going from one like really hot trendy look yes. and, and beautiful by the way, those milk back nails were gorgeous into um, a set that did really well on Instagram uh, and even on Twitter, yes. it, it did really well. So across different platforms we saw, this is a popular summer look, a blooming marble. Yes. How are you gonna do this? I'm actually gonna try something different as far as the marble. Mm -hmm. Something I've been um, wanting to try, so why not try it today? Interesting, is that what happens in the salon, by the way, where somebody wants a look and you're like, let me just give this a give rip? It. I mean, there's a one way I could do the marble, but I, I think this other way is gonna look cooler, so I think it'll work, so I'll try it. Okay, and... Yes, I would do that. Okay, so thank you. That's what I wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I really, really wasn't sure it would, like, no, that might not work at all. Then you'd play with it beforehand yeah, before play with executing. It. Because it's one of those things, is it's it's going to be wet gel polish, so, oh, that way didn't work. Wipe, do it the way I would normally do it. Right, I gotcha. Okay, cool. Um, what is the time frame that we're looking at today, Trace? We are giving Stephanie 30 minutes, and then she got to get out. Because <laughs> you got your next client. And she needs to get to work. Get to work, next client's ready to go. Are you ready to go, Tracy? I am ready for it to be over. Let's do it! <laughs> that was wrong. Geo um, did the time go backwards, and I, it's kind of frustrating me. I know, it's gonna ruin our whole timing on the it set now. It is. Good morning, Steph, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. We are going to be starting by lightly pushing back your cuticles. And I just realized that you have two different sets on. Mm -hmm. The shape is same, so yeah. we're good. So let's get prepping. I'm gonna use my medium cross cut. Let's tuck in there. Now what we're doing today is we're doing a fill and we're going to be doing um, a superficial design over the top. So. I'm actually not going to worry about removing all of her ombre. I'm not concerned. I'm just concerned about prepping the back of the nail. Coming all the way through. We have our little milk bath nails on. Clean it up. Um, the reason I'm not concerned about it is because I'm really not going to cover that free edge with product. So I'm just roughing it up. Oh, that drives me crazy. <laughs> um, roughing it up so everything sticks, but I'm really not going to be putting product over the top of that ombre part, so just kind of a speed thing. Why sit there and worry about removing it all when it's not going to matter in the end? Yeah, because you'd be removing and then filing and then... Yeah, I would spend all this time like remove, remove, and it's, it's just literally not going to matter. Okay, so we have... We have various colors on you right now. Let's see, this hand has cover peach. The other hand, you have white skull, uh, white, core white for the milk bath nails, I believe. And then I think I did cover pink on the other nails. Mm -hmm. Now again, we're doing a full coverage. Most of the time you would have used one like pink color throughout the whole set or pink and core white. Um, but obviously you needed this hand done for something else and it got peach because Greg stole <laughs> our cover peach and we couldn't find it. Um, I'm just going to fill you with cover peach because again, why would I sit here and remove a bunch of stuff when I'm just going to put gel polish over the top. So we're good to go. So again, it's just kind of thinking about is what I'm going to be doing really going to matter in the end? If the answer is, I like those charts. You ever see those charts? It's like, is it this? Go to the next one. Yeah. Is it this? Like, so if the answer is no, move on. So with this, you will still see what was underneath my nose. Is that something that you would have discussed with your client ahead of time? Probably. <laughs> Possibly. More than likely, yes. 
Um, I think once a client gets used to you, mm -hmm. they know like, oh, she probably will just cover it up and they can specify if they want it to remove. But if it's a new client, yeah, I mean, talk to them, be like, hey, you're gonna see a little of this um, flower design yeah. underneath, very minimal. Um, we only have a 30 minute service scheduled for you. Um, so you can either, we can do something else and incorporate the milk bath nail into it, or we'll, the next time you come in, we'll remove everything off that nail and, um, and then start over on those nails. Mm -hmm. But there's additional costs when it comes to that. So it's really up to them. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, especially with something so subtle as those milk bath nails underneath, can you flip them? you're just really not gonna notice it much. We'll, we'll flip over again once we're done, guys, so you guys can see. I mean, a client really, really probably is not gonna notice that much. It's not like a full glitter under a pink and white or right. vice versa. I always let it be up to the client because then it was kind of their decision whether it was that bothersome to them mm -hmm. and then as well as if they wanted to pay the difference because if we wanted to remove, they would then be paying for the removal and the two additional nails and likely that would have been four because they would have been upset exactly and more often than not they'd rather save a couple bucks and just have that light difference on the bottom that's really not gonna matter but again you let them choose you know it's, yeah it's uh people just get upset when they feel like you're not communicating correct simple conversation simple price structure set out so people can see it um, and then you move on. And usually that would probably be a conversation I would have had before they scheduled their next appointment. Because again, if you're removing a bunch of nails, uh, that's gonna take you more time. Mm -hmm. First acrylic of the day, always so much fun. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to make sure that you have enough time scheduled. You don't want to pop that on them when they first sit down. Yeah, that was usually a conversation I would have when doing the encapsulated nail. Like if I had done the milk bath, I'd be like, okay, just so you know, this is a design that you can either keep for a while or you're going to see yeah. it underneath. I've, I've, I would figure that someone would keep the milk bath for a while and just kind of work around it. Like the other nails could get something that complements it. But again, it's, it's their money. So mm -hmm. it's totally up to them. When I was in salon, I found I would always let people know that kind of thing ahead of time because, because I was kind of conscious of like their budget. Mm -hmm. And I found sometimes people would even be like, I don't care. Like that it was like an extra charge. Like they were kind of almost um, off put that I was concerned. And they're like, I don't care about the money. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, just do, we'll do it however you want then. Yeah. <laughs> but I just like, like you said, to let my clients yeah, know. you don't know the, what the, the client that, you know, she's, she, I, I've done it myself. I'm like, I'm rolling on budget. I, I don't need surprises this week. Yeah, exactly. So as long as they knew ahead of time, yeah. if, you know, that maybe they were okay with a high cost or maybe they did want to kind of budget it more, but either way, it was still up to them. Yep. I like it. So we're just going in with that acrylic, guys. Just really nice, small amount, nice and wet, so it just kind of floats back to that cuticle. Just l guiding it with my brush and brushing it slightly out. That way we won't have that much filing either to do. But yeah, I like that. The communication is just the key, and we get so afraid to c communicate with our customers, but it, it causes problems in the long run. Mm -hmm. So. We want them to communicate with us. We got to communicate with them. Mm -hmm. So we have any questions from the last? Um, there's been some questions on shaping as in um, where the thickness needs to be mm -hmm. and like how to keep the structure of your nail but still giving that illusion that it is um, not like a big old, you know. Two by four. Exactly, so um, where the thickness needs to be with them still looking dainty. The thickness is always gonna be in that stress area. So, the, and we just gotta remember like the longer the nail, the thicker that stress area is. The shorter, it doesn't have to be so thick. Um, I think sometimes people are surprised like when we do our snap off, snap -off technique, mm -hmm. Um, and they actually see this thickness right through here. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys saw that right and kind of, it's not quite the center, but right where that apex upper arch stress area is. Um, that's where we want it and we'll cut it, we'll snap it and people are like, wow, I had no idea it was that thick. Mm -hmm. and it's because it's a long nail. So the key is to give that illusion at the tip of a nice thin nail with keeping the structure and the strength in the center. 
So it's, um, honestly, it took me a while to get where I understood it. Um, cause we tend to go too thin when we're first starting. So you're going to have some breaks and, um, that's normal. Don't worry. It happens to the best of us. Um, just remember that you will get there. Just have to learn from it each time. And then there's some clients, I don't know about you, Steph, that I did have to thicken that up more than others. They mm -hmm. just were so hard, rough on their nails. So that's another thing. It, uh, one client's thickness might not be another an other client's thickness. So it's, yeah. But that right in that stress area is the most important. Then we can kind of thin out the tip and make it look nice and thin. It's an illusion. And how important is that to you? Like the apex, the sh stress point. It's vital. It's very important because first of all, it just makes the nail look way better mm -hmm. I think I don't like a flat nail and then again it's, it's gonna cause uh, strength and keep your clients nails from snapping mm hmm so to me important you very um, I feel like you anybody you know you can make a beautiful nail but if the structure is not there mm -hmm. then what's the point you're just gonna have clients coming back or not coming back because yeah exactly it'll look beautiful on the floor exactly once they break it so what is a conversation you would have when your client says but I want thin nails mm. I think because sometimes when you they see you putting these are still wet I'm gonna have that issue today um, so sometimes when you're moving very quickly, the acrylic doesn't have time to set up. So I'm just lightly going over the top of her nail, causing friction, which is going to help it speed up. Um, now, totally forgot. I went into Tracy's world. Sorry, Steph. <laughs> what was the question? What would your conversation be with your client when they said that they wanted really thin nails, mm -hmm. that they didn't like the thickness of the apex? So sometimes when you're doing them, especially a client will be like, I, I like my nails thin. Mm -hmm. I like my nails. And it's like, don't worry. So do I. I like to give that look. So what I would ask them is to wait until we're finished just to make sure that, you know, they see the final product and yeah. what you're going with. Then there's some that are like, no, I want it super, super thin. And there's a reality check. There's a like, if I go thinner, you more than likely will break them. Mm -hmm. Um, Though I am game, because some of them are like, well, that's how I've always worn. I'm like, let's try it. I'll go a little thinner. However, if you break them and you're not listening to really what I had to say about it, um, I will charge you for the repairs. I don't normally charge for repairs, and we're going to have to thicken them up. Mm -hmm. So I I'm game to try it. Um, but I don't like flat nails. Like... That's, that would be the hard part for me, is if they're, they're going wanting to go so thin that it becomes flat. Then I'm like, no, it's a hard pass. How about you? Did you just let them try it or? Sometimes, but same as you, I would tell them that I wasn't gonna, I always guaranteed my work for at least two to three weeks. So if they came back with a break within that time frame, it wasn't my fault, it was theirs. Because mm -hmm. um, those weren't the nails that I had suggested for them. Um, and same, like I would just kind of let them know that it wasn't gonna look thick. It may look thick during the application process, but the end result was gonna look fine. Right. <clears throat> and then I would just explain to them. I think that a lot of the time clients, um, if you have a valid explanation for them, they kind of chill out. Like if you tell them why it needs to be thick there, you know? Well, and that, and, and it's having the right response at the time. I, I say this a lot, but like, when we don't have a, a good response or a quick response or a confident response yeah. to an answer, it's like blood in the water. All of a sudden they lose confidence in you and what you're doing. Then they're just going to ask more questions. Yeah. So be, you know, you know why you're doing it a certain way. Be confident in your answer and just be firm. Yeah. Don't, the minute you start letting them second guess you, makes you second guess yourself and that's when your nails are not going to turn out so well yep so there's been some comments in the facebook community about shaping so maybe while you're going through and shaping so we have kind of what would you describe as shape it's not really a stiletto i call it like a soft stiletto or a long almond yeah an almanetto mm -hmm. um 
which I really love the shape on you. Go ahead and flip. You have some slip pour underneath. So I'm going to take care of that. She's been playing with slip pour and it is attached. <laughs> um, so shaping, I, I really love just doing shaping that complements the client. Now, sometimes they have their own idea of what a good shape is. Um, and I'm really not picky when it comes to that. If a client wants to wear a shape that I really don't like on them, that's fine. It's up, it's up to them. It's what they like. Um, when you are doing custom shaping like this, it is going to take more time um, because you're always constantly tapering it in. And I find that you probably will have to redo them every once in a while because they really start to lose their shape. As that natural nail grows out, I find that it sometimes is beneficial to do the snap off technique and just kind of start over. Mm -hmm. um, and you can kind of change them up too. Like if we wanted to go a tapered, I call it a screwdriver mm -hmm. because it's pretty, pretty tapered and then just blunt tip. Um, we could do that with these. Um, it just depends what look you're going with. From here on this shape, you have a lot of room to play. Mm -hmm. It's when they're short. Yeah. There's not a whole lot, a lot of room. And just so clients understand too, like if you came in and you're like, you know what, I wanna, I wanna go square. I wanna go short square. And this is the shape that you normally love, but you're like, I, I want to go short square because I'm going on a trip, uh, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Just as long as you understood that to go back to this is going to cost, it will cost you money because I'm going to have to take them off and redo the shape and everything. So you're back at a pretty high end full price because I do charge extra for shaping. Back to that honest conversation. Honest conversation always. These are all things that you can be talking about while working on your client. Yeah. I find that a lot of clients um, are curious. Doesn't mean they want it that time. They're just curious and they'll, they will ask questions while you're working. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between this and this? And my friend told me I should, oh, the friends, <laughs> the friends are the best. My friends told me that I should get this. What do you, you know, so it is a good time to have conversations like that. And just be confident in your answers, like you were saying before, because they're not asking questions to, like, quiz you. No. They're asking questions because they're curious, and this is your profession, so you know the answers. You're the expert. And that's... So, Habib and I just had a really interesting, too, just um, conversation about quality, quantity versus quantity. Yeah. It's going to be on a biz talk. Um, I think that some people, when they're watching these videos, are like, if she would have just spent this much more time, I'm going to spend enough time where I'm happy. I don't go, oh, time's up. The nails look awful, but the time is up. I'm going to work until I'm happy. So giving me an extra 30 minutes on something does not mean, actually, it probably means that I'm going to file way too much off and have to start over. Mm -hmm. um, so giving me more time does not equal better set of nails. It just, when I'm done, I'm done. Time. I think there's a confusion about that a little, a little bit. Well, I wear the nails after these and they're great quality. Like there's not any breaks. There's not any issues with the design. They are good quality nails and they're just done quickly which I love in and out I, you know I go get my hair done and I feel bad for my hairdresser because I have no patience and of course she's doing like the full ombre and all this stuff and I'm like 20 minutes in I'm like am I done am I over is mm -hmm. it over you don't even have all the foils in um so I don't I I just of that mindset of like I just need to be somewhere else doing something else Okay. Let's get rid of that. Let's get this out. Clean you off. Make sure, because sometimes once we remove the dust, we'll see something. Make sure it all looks. Compare that thumb again. Yep. Okay, protein bond. Let's put that down. Protein bond, 
is so helpful when it comes to gel polish guys it's really going to make it stick well make sure that you get no chipping we don't buff the nail we go right from that 150 file straight in look you still have some ombre we don't care we don't care it will be covered is there a time that you need to wait for protein bond to set up no you well i mean if you're doing one nail, I would give it a couple seconds. But if you're doing all 10 fingers, by the time you're done with the 10th finger, you're, you're ready to rock on the other hand again. So, yes and no? <laughs> Makes sense. Was that a good <laughs> answer? <laughs> okay, we're gonna use Big Sigh. This is a go time? This is go time. We're gonna use go time all the way through. This is such a pretty color. We have the compressors working today. Yeah, I noticed that. We move the liquid filling over to this warehouse, so you guys are gonna hear that more and more. How long does go time need to cure? I like to cure go time each layer for 60 seconds. It's not like... Oh, head. Sorry. It's not like manicure, where I cure it for 30, I cure it for 60 each time. And that way I know the cure is all the way through, especially the darker colors. Mm-hmm. Can you use base and top with go time even though it's not required? Yes, you can. So the difference we have, because we get asked a lot, what's the difference between go time and Mm -hmm. uh, go time and our manicure. Our manicure. Oh, no, oh. I don't think there's a cord for it. Oh, Craig! <laughs> I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> do we have a uh, salon assistant? Um, Gio? We do. His name's Gio. Hi. Can you go get. <laughs> there's no light over there. No, it came from over there, but I couldn't find the cable. Because it was when he was doing your nails the other day. Oh my goodness. I found it on that desk, but it had no cable attached to it when I found it. Guys, working with Greg, the <laughs> struggle is real. Love him to death. But he's all over the place when it comes to taking stuff. And even if it isn't his fault, we're going to blame him anyway. He's not here. He's next door teaching. Anyway, the difference between go manicure and yeah. go time. So manicure is a three-part uh, system. It has a base and a top. Go Time does not need a base and top, and Manicure has a sticky layer, and Go Time does not. Um, however, you can, if you need that extra strength, and I find most people do, you can use the base and top. Also, I find I like to use base Manicure base underneath it because I like to electric file my stuff off. Mm -hmm. So this is going to give me that buffer when I do. The, um, obviously, this is over natural nails when we're talking about what we're talking about um, and that way that gives me that buffer layer to go to I only have to go to um, the base coat yeah. when I'm removing I love our new lamps I think my favorite part is that they don't beep <laughs> so funny I didn't even realize that they didn't beep until the bee brought it up and I'm like oh my gosh I'm so noise sensitive um, it's heaven. It's the best thing. It is the best thing. I mean, the digital display is amazing as well, but the no beeping just, it's king. It is. Okay, let's see. We might have to go three on top of that milk bath just to make sure, but we'll look at it in a second. Is my head in the way? I'm sorry. No. No? In? Ugh. I'm pointing you in the wrong direction, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Client knows what we're doing today. Yes, thank God. Someone should. <laughs> this color is so pretty. It's one of my favorite nude colors we have. Big sigh. We have a lot to choose from. We do. We're gonna have some more pretty soon. For everybody that's asking for more gel polish colors, we 
have more coming out. Teaser alert. <laughs> coming out uh, probably around October, the end of the year. We'll do some holiday fall colors. What is your take on cuticle application? Sometimes there's um, comments about where, like, I'm gonna do three on these. If the product is far enough back. Personally, I feel like I would rather be shy of the cuticle than on the cuticle. Yeah, and I realize that when they're watching these videos, it looks like the Grand Canyon is in between the cuticle and the nail. We're getting it as close as possible. Right. Without going on this on on the nail itself. So it does, I mean, I don't know why. Like I'll see it in person, then I'll see it on video. Yeah. And I'm like, when did that happen? And I'll look at them closer and it's like, no, no, no. So we're gonna pull these out and we are going to line some of these out. We're gonna line out. This is Found Paradise. Line a couple. It's like um, the camera adds 10 pounds. Just totally. The camera adds several inches from the cuticle. <laughs> so true. I'm not really doing a rhyme or reason to these mixes. So we have Found Paradise, then I put, um, is that Triptastic? No, Always Bridemaid down. This is in the moment. Then we're gonna use Triptastic with some of these. And then let's see, we'll do this one. Ditch them. Lots of ditching. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, would you be charging me for each color? Uh, yes, ma'am. I would be. Okay. Put it on the company card. Put it on the company <laughs> card. <laughs> so, we're just going to grab from one side to the other and then we're just going to place it down. And wipe it off. Let's grab some different colors. Okay, I'm gonna do one at a time. Let's switch it out. This one will go this way using that same. Grab a little bit more of that. Oh, this is cool. These are fun. They are fun. I just like it. It's a very cool way to marble. Yes, it is, and I'm glad it worked. <laughs> Let's put some green in there. So it's nice about gel polish when you're doing artwork with it is it can you can keep playing with it. Yep. Sometimes when I do anything with polish, it's kind of difficult. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm talking to the nails. Sorry, guys. When you know it's good. Yeah. Oh, I'm digging. Definitely digging. Let's see. We're getting brave. <laughs> Cool. We had some really good suggestions in the Young Nails community page. What did we have? Just some ideas for different videos that we're, I think, working through. Um, for anybody watching that hasn't joined, you should oh, join the Young Nails community. Got to, got to join. If you have any specific designs you need to see done, we try to kind of honor your guys' requests when we can. Yeah, I, I, it's it's so nice to have the community because everybody's so helpful to each other. And then on top of it, it's super helpful for us. Ooh, I like the smear. <laughs> um, super helpful for us because we're able to get ideas for the filming and the mm -hmm. videos. Go ahead and switch. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you guys for that. It's huge, hugely helpful. And that's for all the videos too. Like if there's biz talk things you guys want covered, 
real times, whatever. Yup, I like it. And uh, keep it coming. And keep helping everybody, guys. It's, it's been so encouraging to see the love. Um, and I, I know that people are getting clientele off of it because we have, you know, a ton of different One people. Oh, wow, almost. It's the thumb. I know. The thumb always gets me. And let's put some more pink in there. Feeling the pink. The pink that you hate. The pink that I hate. <laughs> There's something about pink though. Okay, we're gonna put manicure matte over the top. Matte nails are my favorite. I really was kind of surprised that there was matte on the set, the picture we took it from, and I love it. A cool tip is if you do not have a matte top coat, you can actually use our Synergy Gel Gloss or Stain Resistant, and after it's cured, buff off the shine with um, your medium grit buffer, and it won't compromise the top coat, and it will stay matte for the full two weeks. That's a great tip. I like that. I always forget that. Mm -hmm. But again, it's kind of like when someone walks in and they want matte and you're like, I don't have any matte top coat. Mm -hmm. You're like, what do I do? Matte it out. Just extra work to you. But at least you know it'll work. Yeah. So in a minute, we're good? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's swipe it. I like these. <laughs> Me too. I want these. I want these. I'm a little jealous. I'm not gonna lie. Keep that one in. Oh, we went over 30. Yep. By 10 seconds. <laughs> By 10 seconds. That one light killed me. Greg. Greg. <laughs> But it happens. If yep. you go over on time, apologize profusely to your next client and try not to make it a habit. You are done. Thank you. Thirty minutes, thirty-five seconds. Tracy, I'm very disappointed. You went over. Fail. That's a fail. <laughs> Obviously, there were some technical difficulties. Yes, it happens. It does happen in slow. Sometimes That's... you're just running slower. First, yeah. First set of the day, first nails of the day, kind of kick back a little. Yeah. Run a little slow. Uh, obviously, I had to wait for one hand to cure until I could put the other hand in, which costs time. Um, but overall, yeah. Thirty-five seconds, not too bad. And again. Apologize though to your next client. Like right. if they have to wait, you know, they're not a minute or two late is is not a big deal. Correct. But if it's if, if it's five or more, it's like I'm so sorry, you know, uh, that won't happen again. Or uh, you know, sometimes things happen. Yeah, I think this is a good. Uh, I think it's interesting. Like in the course of a day, how normal was it for you for like clients to be two, three, four minutes, five minutes? Because the thing is, is when you're on a schedule like that. You push one person back five, everybody's out. Domino effect. It's domino effect, everybody's yep. out five, and then you gotta try to make up the time somewhere to like get it back, right? So how how common is that? It, extremely common. Okay, it happens. Yeah, it happens. And then like, you know, a lot of times, uh, we talk about I'll schedule an hour, but it only takes me 45 minutes. There, there's so there my you go. buffer. There there's, you save time. There's, there's my catch up time. Right. Great set of blooming marble nails, Tracy. I think these are probably one of your favorites. I, I love these nails. Yes. I love these. <laughs> I saw I that. Thank you. Thank you. Great set. We'll see you next time on Real Time.